China. Of the list of the 10 top Canadians of 2023, this guy just missed the cut. Coming in 11th, our friend Andrew Raycroft of Nesson talking hockey regression. Fourier, Razor, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, look at you in a good mood. So, Razor, <clears throat> so based, <clears throat> whoa, based on our conversation oh. last week. I guys, mean, somebody, dying. Get, somebody get a cracker. You're dying over here. You've been clearing your throat for I like know, three days I now. Know, I know, I know. Yeah. Maybe, I have the, maybe I have the vid. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Do I need a mask? Yeah, put a K95 mat. Put two on it. Put some plexiglass up for me, please. All right, so last week, last week, Razor, we talked about your open, which you just heard, which I think is okay. And you, you had uh, requested maybe the old school uh, version that I created, along with Nick, which is this. Huck it talk. Huck it talk. <laughs> Hockey talk. It's not the NBA. It's the NHL. It's hockey. Christian Fourier, hockey insider. None of these guys in Boston sports talk radio go to the games. Let the adults talk hockey. I was you sit over there. Sure, old time hockey. Like it is sure. Yeah, yeah. They always go out and find a kid who's really good to join the team. We need a ringer. We need a Canadian. That's why I played hockey. Because yeah, you either play hockey or you have to go hunt bear. Huck it, talk. See, right? So, Razor, you're the guest. Like, you're the guest, so I feel like it's only, you know, fair that you get to decide which open we play for you. There's the hockey talk version that I thought was very inspirational and very comical, or the the, the one we usually play, which is kind of just hockey talk boring. <laughs> no, I mean, it has to be your vision. It's priceless. And you like and it, that one better. Yeah. Absolutely, I do, and it's an absolute car stopper for anyone in the out on the pike. When they hear that, come on, they're not going to know what hit them. Exactly, it's, it's wonderful. I Brilliant. love it. I, I mean, the end line is See what money. When you left, you either play hockey or you're shooting bear. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever eaten uh, bear, uh, Razor? Uh, yeah, I've, I've tried it before. Yes, what? not not a fan. Wait, wait, wait. What do they serve bear with? Huh? Oh, mashed, nice, pota- mashed, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Maybe yeah. I don't. know, Maybe a nice uh, red. I don't know. What do you white? You, red? What? What do we? What kind of? We're, what are we pairing bear with? Oh, cabernet. You oh, okay. need a dark cab okay. with that for sure. It's real gamey. <laughs> um, but and yeah, of course. You, you might, mashed potatoes or potatoes go with everything that we do in Canada. Well, is that's, that a real thing? No, it really is. Hold on, hold on a second. I, 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 I I'm gonna, like you guys are just No, messing we're not with right messing now. with you. So, hold on because it is it is uh, Canada is great for hockey and wild game, right? So, Razor, if you can mm-hmm. answer me these questions just with yes or no, right? Have you had okay. have you had goose? Yes. Duck? Yes. You already admitted bears a yes. Moose? Have you had moose? Yes. No. Would you eat moose? I feel like moose is a little majestic. I, 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 I like a unicorn. I, I, I cherish, yeah, I cherish moose a little bit more than than the others. So I, I don't know if I would go out of my way to eat moose. You're a venison guy. I mean, you're from Canada. Everybody yeah, eats deer. Sure. Yeah, yeah, deer jerky over uh, venison steak. Ooh, yeah, no, I like like deer, Venice sausage, and and jerky is better than the actual like steak. Yeah, you have to have it. You cure it a little bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And I'm just trying to think, what other wild animal am I missing that would have been in Canada? No. It's like rain. Well, reindeer in Sweden, right? That's kind of in the <gasps> deer family. Oh, I, I forgot suppose, about that. Rudolph. How was how was re- uh, yeah? How was reindeer? Reindeer is very good. Yeah, I did that. In Sweden. There's lots of that in Sweden. So reindeer is good as well. It's, it's actually, yeah, I, I would say it's a little less gamey than, than venison. So but, it's good. but reindeer out in Sweden is basically like our cows. Like, they don't they farm Correct. them just yeah, like yeah. cows? Yeah. They, it, well, yeah, it's essentially, yeah, it's, it, I don't know if they get farmed the same way, but <laughs> you'll drive, you'll, like, I remember driving and, and literally there's like 500 reindeer in the They're field. They're everywhere. Eating hay. I think yeah, it, they, it, it really Way up north, it's crazy. They are everywhere. <laughs> I, if I if I had a hundred dollars to bet, I would not have bet that Fourier would have made a, a joke or a poll about reindeer. I figured his Swedish thing would have been oh, and a couple of blondes over yeah. there too, more than. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's in the south. They're like cows in the south and blondes. <laughs> I love it. So Razor, uh, I know we asked you last time. Like this team is just off to uh, an an amazing start. They win 5-2 last night against the Islanders. And we were talking about the, the team, and a couple of people brought up the schedule, Razor. 
Are the mm-hmm. Bruins getting fat on some non-playoff teams on the schedule? Does it really matter to you at this point? I'm curious as to your thoughts on the level of competition the Bees have played so far. The first seven or eight games, that was that that was something you could look at. You, you could, I would have debated it, and I would have gone into it. Of course, you have to win the games on your schedule. You have to win. It's the National Hockey League. There's no easy nights. But when you look at what they've done in the last four games, without Charlie McAvoy, their best defenseman, Toronto, very good team, expected to win the division. Uh, Detroit, who's been very good this season on the road. Dallas was in the semifinals for the Stanley Cup last season. You played them at home, beat them in a New York Islanders team last night that expects to be in the playoffs. So they've, the, their, their schedule has certainly sharpened in the last 10 days, and, and they've passed through all of that. And so, so, no, I don't think you can use the schedule anymore for a reason why their record is what it is. Um, especially what we've seen without Charlie McAvoy in the last four games. Yeah, and uh, and I'm glad you mentioned the Islanders because they're I mean they're expected to make the playoffs. I had somebody on the Twitch line giving me crap because I said earlier that the Islanders were were a good team but with a good goalie, right? I mean that what is it Sorokin yeah. or whatever his name is like that's 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 not some just chump goalie. That's a guy is pretty established, right? Absolutely, yeah. No, he's been in the Vesna mix the last couple of years. He's considered one of the top seven guys in the world. So no, he's no chump. And, uh, and, and yes, the Islanders have, have played well this season. They're really tough defensively and they don't give up five goals too often. Oh, okay. So like, so Gresh and I were talking about the way this team is winning. Um, and correct me if, if we're wrong, because you know, you're the hockey guy. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so defense, um, defense, including your goalie, obviously, uh, defense and special teams. Is that how this team is kind of, is this the, the foundation of this team? Cause it seems like they grind yeah. out wins. Yeah. It's the identity, the, the goaltending, the goaltending is nuts. And, and it, it's funny. My 14 year old, we were in the car today and, you know, listening to, you know, all Mark with 27 saves again last night. And if you, I don't know, I, I'm sure a lot of people haven't been focused on what's going on with the Edmonton Oilers who are supposed to go to the Stanley cup finals. They have two of the best players in the league. They're two nine and one on the season. Their goalies are horrible. And, and my guys, my my teenager said, everyone here wants to rip on the goalies, and they have the two of the best. If they had a, if one of those guys went to Edmonton, they'd literally give them keys to the city. Like they would be absolute gods in Edmonton if either of those guys played up there. So it, it is absolutely starting with the goaltending. That's the identity of this team, and it builds from there. And and yeah, they're really hard to play against. They're they're so solid. They don't make it. They make it, the other teams earn everything they get. There's no freebies, and, and that that includes the penalty kill as well. Like the there, there's no easy power play goals that they give up. So when when you grind away the way that they are, it's just really hard to to beat them. They don't because they don't beat themselves. It's it's like the old Patriot way, right? Belichick waiting for the other team, and I and I want to emphasize the old way of the Patriots in that they just don't beat themselves, and, and that's kind of the Bruin mentality right now. Uh, Andrew Raycroft oh. with Gresham Fourier. Fourier said that like an hour ago, and mm. now he's putting his feet up. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> I did. Oh, I love it. Lady, I, Lady I, I Bing was, over I, here. I swear, to, I swear to God I didn't hear it. I, I, and if I had him, I might not have said it, just <laughs> not to give Fourier that pleasure. Um, <laughs> the growth that is coming from oh. this side of the table is amazing. Uh, hey, uh, Razor, how? <laughs> How has James Van Riemsdyk played this year, in your opinion? Unbelievable. We were talking after the game last night, after after the post game. What what a what a value signing by the Boston Bruins and Don Sweeney again. Uh, what a what a great awareness or, or a great finding of need. And and James Van Riemsdyk's been in Philadelphia the last few years on a rebuilding team. Might have gotten lost in the weeds a little bit as an older guy, but he has an absolute purpose this season. He's rejuvenated playing for real wins and, and a, on a real team. And he, he fits what this team probably has needed a little bit the last few years in that net front ability to get pucks or sticks on puck. Uh, you see the pass he made from the corner last night. He's just, he's always around the net. He's always around the puck and, and 600 assists last night in a, in a great career. He's, He's fit into this team so seamlessly and really given them 
a boost in, in and around the net. Help me understand something. After the game last night, Jim Montgomery said about Charlie Coyle and his first NHL hat trick, he's just a team first guy, but when he has that jump like he had tonight, he becomes a dynamic offensive player. Help me understand the context of that, because my first question would be, why doesn't Charlie Coyle have the jump like that all the time? Well, and that's that's a good question. I'm sure Charlie Coyle's trying to 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 do that, it, but that's as we know, pro sports or college league. That's that's the key to greatness is to be able to do it every single night, every single play, and and that's not so easy to do. But it, it is in Charlie Coyle, and we saw that last night and. Uh, we talked about it after the first intermission. He hadn't scored any goals yet, but he was all over the play, and he was skating, and he was shooting pucks. And I think at times, it's it's not deferral from Charlie Coyle, but I think he looks to his line mates to to try and help them get into the game before he gets himself into the game. Sometimes when, but when he when he does what he did last night, where it's just he's going to drive, he's going to be the one moving his feet, and, and that's what Montgomery's talking about. And I think he this season, that's his expectation, to do that more often. Now, to do it 82 times is very difficult, but I think a hat trick like last night could really catapult him into feeling like he can do it on a more consistent basis or more often every month. So, so Razor, um, are you saying that he should be more selfish? Is that the best scenario? Like, I would say the perfect Charlie Coyle would be – more selfish and get more shots on net because what do you have six? I mean, he had uh, a bunch of points. Yeah. I mean, a hat trick. Even though you know Pasta kind of gifted him that last one, would that be the ideal situation for him? Yeah, that's the easiest way to put it. Now, so in hockey, right? The, there's so much of don't be don't be selfish, make the unselfish play. But there's a lot of times during a game where shooting the puck is the unselfish play. You get in on a two on one. And, and the p- passing lane isn't there, you shoot the puck. Because if you try and make a pass, that's actually being selfish to the rest of the team. If you have a great opportunity to score a goal, you, you need to shoot it. You, you don't look to, to, to make a pass that isn't there. That can be selfish as well. So, so yeah, selfish is the word, it, but really it's, it's about being direct and, and making the right play. And, and if you have to shoot a couple extra pucks on net, rather than making, trying to make the perfect pass, to get yourself and get your line mates into the game, then then that's the unselfish thing to do. Okay. There's got to be things to correct. There's got to be stuff to improve on out there. Where's the improvement point for the Bruins at this point in the season, Razor? Well, it's still the rush chances against. There was a, they gave up a two-on-one. It wasn't real. Like, it was just kind of a random hockey play last night, but they gave up a two-on-one goal on the power play. Um, there was a few other rush opportunities where – their D are getting stuck in the zone or their high guy isn't making the right play. So Jim Montgomery's talked about it, that, that their rush defense has to be better. I think they were going into the Dallas game. I don't know what the last two games have shook out, but they were second last in the league in rush chances against going into the Dallas game. So, so that can get better. The power play was really good last night. Going into that, you wanted to see them you know, chip away and get some more opportunities. They were just 21st overall going into last night's game, but, but a couple goals, that, that's going to make them better. So my two points is the power play can always be better, and then the rush chance, again, you don't want to go against uh, a Vegas or a Colorado by giving up a lot of, a lot of scoring chances. Okay, so we have the, uh, what's the, Patra, who uh, seems like he's not going anywhere, but there's another new guy. Mason Lowride, did I say his name right? Yep. Lowride. Yeah. Lowride. Oh, okay, man, 6'5". Six, five, six, Mason five, Lowrider. 6'5", 2'11", exactly. 22 years old. Um, tell me, what, what, what do you, what's your take on him as far as, one, what he's able to do? I mean, I know he's been going back and forth, the whole you know Dunkin' Donuts Center. So how does a guy like that contribute? <laughs> <laughs> how does the a guy like that? It's the Amp now, It's not the Dunkin' Donuts Center? It's called it's called called the Amp oh, now. Really? Shows how long it's I've been down to Providence. It's the worst name arena in America. Uh, it's, it's, it'll always be the dunk to me. Yeah, thank you. Me more too. Than enough, I, more than enough hours of my life in that place. Um, yeah, the dunk. You know, Mason Laura has got a huge ceiling and, and huge upside. He's come in. This is his first year pro out of Ohio State last season. 
and and he's he's playing really well. He he's got so much upside offensively as a defenseman. He's learning on the fly how to play defense in this league and and this stint what he's learned in the last 7 days being in the National Hockey League is probably more than he has in his entire life and you know, he's going to be up and down I think and that's that's going to be a good thing for him. I think every time he goes back to the minors and comes back up with an injury or or performance based, he's only going to get better. So the good news is that situation is you don't have to make a decision with him. He's 45 minutes away in Providence. He, well, unless he's in Gresh's traffic, then it's a three-hour drive. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, thank oh, yeah. you for that. Yeah. He's back and yeah. forth. Yeah. And then he'll make sure everybody he's, knows he's in traffic, right? That's part of the, that's <laughs> part of the no Gresh is, situation. I got to free the beast. It's either yelling <laughs> someone on the road or letting road out that rage. way. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, he, it, it's, he's been a great – he's been a, a great surprise. Well, not a surprise, but just – it's been nice to see him acclimate himself to the pro game the way he has, and, and he's only going to get better with these opportunities in the National Hockey League. Well, great stuff, Razor, as always. We appreciate you, friend, and the, the breakdown, and it looks like we have the new open for love it. Andrew Hockey Raycroft talk. squared away, <laughs> which is really the only thing Fourier cared about in this whole thing today with you was <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. make sure we get Razor's thoughts on whoa, my whoa, whoa. idea. Wait a second. First of all, Massive, like, uh, you know, stick tap for me with the whole 2000, the old school Patriots. I told you this morning, they reminded me uh, of, the, you know, the Patriots when they were good. They would, that was what we Love call it. complimentary football, Razor. So somehow try to throw in the complimentary hockey for your analysis yeah, your on sec- Nesson. Your second star for you and everyone else is first. Well done. There you go. We'll get that. I'm totally fine with it. <laughs> I wonder if we could get Razor to say something on the post game show, the pregame show. Oh, you mean like uh, the code word, a like projector. you give me or whatever? Can you say projector? <laughs> projector was the one. Yeah, that's. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Someone that's might look trouble. at you and be like, "What is that?" Give that to Jaffe. Let me see if Jaffe will say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Jaffe that. will be like, "I had said that. it first. <laughs> <laughs> that's where he gets his suits from, yeah. Mister Projector." Yeah. I don't, anyway, Razor, Thanks, thank Razor. you, buddy. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds great. Have a good weekend. There All we right. go. I love Razor. He no, is, he's the best. He is the best. He's he really the best. Is. I tell you what, we have the best hockey analysis guy in the city, and we're the best baseball analysis guy. Still looking for some football people. I wonder if we can find some of those guys. Yeah, I know. We're still searching for those. We suck. Yeah, just we have no we idea what's going we on. Have no idea. None.